Another news, Singapore is set to host its most advanced quantum computer yet. Under a new deal, tech firm Continuum will set up R&D here, work with local industry and roll out talent programs. Singapore's National Quantum Office says it's a key step towards becoming a leading quantum hub. They also will be setting up courses and workshops to introduce these end-user companies to quantum computing. And we should not underestimate the effort that's needed from the company side. Uh, quantum computing still been quite new and uh, there's a lot of hand-holding that's required. So this partnership with uh, Continuum will allow us to organise sessions to, to bring all these users on board onto the quantum computing journey. Bringing end-user companies into the quantum era and even into Singapore is a very critical part of our joint aspiration for success. In fact, it's one of the key indicators that we've succeeded is when there's an uptick in quantum computing uh, by industries around and the strength of the hub, the world-class nature of the hub, attracts companies to come here versus elsewhere. A crucial part of Continuum's strategy is bringing Helios, its general-purpose quantum computer, to Singapore. It'll be the first country to host the system outside the US. And this is expected to pull in talent and investment. Nicholas Ng finds out why. What I've got next to me is a quantum computer, the sort of machine that helps researchers find out how to apply well-understood quantum physics to calculate solutions to problems that ordinary classical computers can't. Think of it this way. If you used a classical computer, like your laptop or phone, to find a route through a maze, it would go through each potential route one by one. Get a quantum computer to do it, and it does each possible route at the same time. The reason for the difference is from the way that they work. A classical computer is built on transistors, essentially having many switches that collectively go yes or no billions of times in a second. That powers everything from Excel spreadsheets to watching videos on your phone. Quantum computers instead use qubits, which are tiny particles like ions that can exist in several states at once. By using that to power calculations, quantum computers go yes, no, and maybe. And that's what lets them do calculations that classical computers struggle with. So far, these calculations are expected to be useful in finance for portfolio optimization, life sciences for things like drug discovery, advanced materials research, and calculations that have many, many variables to optimize for like supply chains. Having the Helios quantum computer in Singapore brings two advantages. The first is that it's a big upgrade from the quantum computers Singapore currently has. And second is that local researchers will get easier and better access to the machine than if they used it remotely. It's a fact that having owning the technology in place in situ uh, is, uh, attracts everybody, attracts companies, that know for sure that there will be access to the machine, that they can explore the discovery of drugs, that they can analyze optimization problems like never before. And uh, uh, in their home country, it's a very difficult process to access that. He adds that bringing a world-class machine into Singapore and drawing companies into using the technology has laid the groundwork for the local quantum ecosystem to grow further. Startups developing quantum tech in Singapore say they've seen interest from investors and clients surge. One even said interest has doubled from last year. Some players tell CNA's Nicholas Ng it's a sign quantum investments made two decades ago are starting to pay off. The people at this office are working on a specific and crucial problem in quantum computing. Figuring out a way to reliably track tiny particles smaller than atoms. Their targeted approach is a change from the way companies used to approach what's called the quantum computing tech stack. That's the set of technologies the field is built on. The stack is starting to get more modular in nature and we see more and more companies tackling specific problems and specific aspects of the stack which in my opinion is a very good sign of the ecosystem growing, becoming healthier and also becoming more established overall. A venture capital fund with its regional headquarters in Singapore focusing on the technology says there's been growing interest from abroad to enter the market, though the established startups have already put the country on strong footing. 
they cover all kinds of technologies. So we see quantum computing startups that develop hardware and software. That's the biggest part. We also see quantum communication startups and we also see quantum sensing startups. So we have all the technologies covered, which is a very good sign, but which also shows how Singapore is positioning itself. So it positions itself um, as an enabler of the whole value chain of quantum technology. While Singapore's 20-odd years of effort and over $700 million worth of investments have laid the groundwork for progress, finding talent to keep the pace is shaping up to be a problem, especially since expertise in quantum computing is much harder to find than in other similar fields. You can upskill people in more traditional fields and in quantum is slightly more, the, the, the slope is, is bigger and that takes time and takes an initiative and it takes um, uh, uh, programs. And as the field grows, we do see this lack of specialized people globally and we might actually face it here. Nevertheless, he believes national talent development initiatives are bearing fruit, though demand from elsewhere could see some being poached abroad.